Hello and welcome to our review of the Herb Witches expansion for the Push Your Luck board game, The Quacks of Quedlinburg. Like Quacks itself, the Herb Witches expansion was designed by Wolfgang Warsh. Features artwork from Dennis Lohausen and was published in 2019. Well, that doesn't actually match Quacks, but the other parts do. Um, who the publisher is, is going to depend on where in the world you are, because this game has something like 13 different publishers currently. Now, my copy comes from North Star Games. In the U.S., this expansion has an MSRP of $39.99. And unlike the base game, this is currently available for purchase, at least when this is going live. Now, the Herb Witches adds a number of optional modules to your games of the Quacks of Quedlinburg. This includes the ability to play with five players, a new ingredient called loco weed, six-point pumpkins, overflow pots, and three kinds of herb witches, which offer rule-breaking powers that can be invoked once a game by each player. In addition to this, you also get new recipe books for all of the original game's ingredients. For a look at what all this looks like, check out our The Herb Witches unboxing video on YouTube. Now, I have no complaints at all about the component quality here. All of the new cardboard is nice and thick and well cut, and most importantly, matches the quality in the base game, which is important because this is a bag builder and you don't want them to feel different. The new rules are only four pages long and very clear, and everything you get in this box will easily fit into the base box. Pretty much exactly what you would want out of a Quacks expansion. Mm -hmm. So everything looks great. How do these new modules play out? What do they add to Quacks? All right, so let's take a look at each of these things in turn, starting with the stuff for playing with five players. You get a new player color, black, and all the stuff that goes with it, including additional white, orange, and green chips, as well as rubies, so do not mess with the distribution. Uh, nice, though perhaps while handy, perhaps the least universally useful portion yeah. of the expansion. It could, however, turn the base game into a must-buy if you've been holding off because your group or family is always five players. Next is the loco weed. This is a new type of ingredient that doesn't have a numerical value on it. There's only one level of loco weed, and the reason there's no number is because loco weed mimics the characteristics of something else in your pot. Its value changes when you pull it out. For example, one recipe for local weed has it copy exactly the last colored chip in your pot. Another has the local weed move forward based on how many rat tails you have that round. And there are others. This is a fun ingredient that really adds to the game both in joy and frustration, which the game really requires both of. Yeah. Now this brings me to what seems like the most popular addition of the game. Six pumpkins! I, just like the pumpkins, these don't really do anything on their own, but the level six version does move six spaces ahead when placed into your pot, which alone can be pretty huge. This is one thing that some people show concern about being overpowered, but with their incredible cost, you really have to work to be able to afford even one. Next up are the overflow pots. Now these slot in beside your bowl and let you keep putting ingredients in even after your pot is full. Now, the thing here is that the colored ingredients don't do anything anymore. All that matters is their value. Now, the white chips, though, do still count and can cause your pot to explode. At the end of the round, you get to add up the value of all the chips in your overflow pot, take half that value in points, with the usual rules being followed if you do happen to explode. Now, some players are lucky enough to need these. I've never been one. See, to me, that very much depends on what ingredients are played. What's in play will greatly affect the chance you're going to fill your bowl or not. Next, we have the Herb Witches, what this expansion is named after. These are represented by tiles that you're going to put out into the playing area. Now, there's four different tiles of each for three different types of witches, so 12 total, but you're only going to use three, one of each type each game. That is randomly determined, though I guess you could pick. Now, each of these witches provides a significant rule-breaking ability, which can be used by each player once per game. Who has used and who hasn't is tracked by some new coin tokens, which is just a quick way to keep track of who's used the tokens or not. Now, the copper witch, and I'm saying copper witch because it's the one that takes a copper token to use, uh, has abilities which affect buying chips. They'll let you buy more chips or give you more money to spend or get double what you paid for or something like that. 
Now, the Silver Witch's abilities are all based around preventing your pot from exploding or mitigating the effects of an explosion once it's happened. And the Gold Witch's abilities are all about scoring bonus points or getting more rubies. These are a real game changer and add a wealth of new mm -hmm. strategy to the game in more ways than you might initially expect. Finally, we have the new recipe cards for all the game's original ingredients. There is one two-sided card for each ingredient, adding a ton of variety to this game, especially when you mix and match. Now, there's no way I'm going to go through all of these, but I will say it was interesting to see quite a few that now let you do things immediately. You place the ingredient, then immediately take points or immediately take rubies. There's also some new recipes that have you adding ingredients to other players' pots. All right, well, that gives us a pretty solid idea of what Herb Witches adds to Quacks. Now, what did you think of this expansion? Is it a must-have? It's, it's close. See, I wouldn't go that far, because to me, a must-have expansion is one that, like, fixes the base game, that now makes it playable or now makes it amazing, and I, the, the base game's garbage without it. And that's not the case here, because the base game of Quacks is still fantastic. I would happily sit down and play someone's copy of Quacks without the expansion. I'm not going to go to my friend's house who, who doesn't have the expansion and be like, no, nah, I don't want to play that because I don't like it without the expansion. Now, what I will say is if that expansion is available, I'm going to use it. it. To me, this is a why not have. If you have Quacks, you're going to want to pick this up. I can't see anyone who likes Quacks not finding at least something, if not the majority of these modules, being enjoyable and wanting them in their game if you didn't like everything. All right, well, how about you and your group? What did you think about each of the new modules added to Quacks with the Herb Witches? All right, so sticking with the same order above, being able to play five players is cool. The only warning I have here, and this surprised me the first time it happened, is adding a player adds more play time than you'd expect. Like, I actually thought, this is a simultaneous play game. Everyone's pulling out the chips at the same time. Adding a player is not going to change anything. It's going to be the exact same game length, and that's not true. Due to things like AP when shopping, doing the math in your head, trying to calculate your odds, and then even just like at the end, having to count up a pot going, oh, do you have any greens? Oh, do you have any of this? Or even calculating rack tails every turn. You've got one more player to do it for. You end up doing this so many times that every little bit of more time adds up to make a longer game than you'd expect overall. And the simple fact that not everyone has five players to play with. I can see this being one of those aspects that you either need or never touch for your average group. Oh, I can see people just preferring the black player color. You've got goths in your group. They'll throw out the yellow and play the black instead. So you might still get a use out of it, even if you only have four players. Now, local weed, it's cool. Um, someone's going to clip that, aren't they? I like having a wild card ingredient in there that I can also work as a catch-up mechanic, depending on the recipes. Uh, the one specifically that's going to give you, it's going to go as far as your rat tails, is great as a catch-up mechanic. Now, the interesting thing I didn't even realize when I first started playing with local weed and buying it is the fact it has no value can actually make it a hindrance because there are a number of ingredients to do things based on other tile values. And often with those, if you pull a local weed, that value counts as nothing. Or even earlier, we were talking about if you're using the overflow pot, well, they have no value on them. So throwing local weed in your overflow pot is useless. Due to this, the value of local weed is actually going to be very dependent on what other recipes are in play. Sometimes it's going to be massively huge and everyone's going to want one. And in other games, they may seem near useless. It really is a missed blessing. But then again, so many aspects of Quacks are that. Six pumpkins. I'm not feeling the love everyone else seems to have for these. They're okay. Uh, they're expensive, but they can really pay off if you draw them because you're probably not going to have a lot of them. And again, their value is going to change based on what they're paired with. If you've got a local weed that jumps up the same amount as the last token you pulled, that makes that six more powerful or that local weed more powerful. If you happen to have the mushrooms in that are based on how many pumpkins are in your pot, sure, why not have more six pumpkins? If I was going to remove any part of Herb Witches, if it was like, you know, you can only play with four of the modules or something, this would probably be the first for me to go. But I don't mind them. And honestly, I just don't buy them in most games. If other people want to buy them, all the power to them. You know, for me, the, their cost put me off them. I'm not sure how many people can afford to love them. Yeah. For people who know Quacks, not the expansion, they cost 22 each. 22 is a lot of money. 
I can usually buy two level two ingredients for that much and two level two ingredients versus one pumpkin. That's a hard sell for me. Yep. Uh, as for the overflow pots, they're neat. Um, I got to say, I the, my favorite part of them is just how well they slot into the existing art like the way they snap on and look like they belong there, which is just a feature of the game already, right? Like the way the potion stands on the stand and there's a little spot to put your rat tails. I love the graphic design of the game and I love how well this fit in. It's just like, oh, that always belonged there. Um, as for gameplay, they're okay. Um, I do know with a few ingredient combos, pots can quickly fill up, especially ones that let you pull chips from your bag and only place one, the ones that reduce your odds of blowing up. So these are great to have in case that happens. Um, we found that while they do award some points, they're not like game break game breaking. It's not like, oh, you got to your overflow plot, you're gonna suddenly be the runaway leader. Overall, I just don't see any reason not to use them. Yeah, you know, they're great to have to have if you need them. And they don't hurt if you don't. Like the fact yeah. that there was nothing, like you just there was the end of the yeah, pot and stuck. that was the end. You're like, I'm done. That that was kind of broken. And so in some ways, uh, you know, this one specific portion of Herb Witches does actually fix something from the old game. Fair. Now, the witches, they are my favorite part of this expansion. Uh, the abilities seem like a great counterbalance to some, but not all, of the randomness of Quack Quedlinburg. The ability to mitigate one bad draw is a great thing. And now I think there's now other ways to get points. Like the fact that there's a witch where I can get points that has nothing to do with the specific combos or, or recipes that are in play. It's just a matter of getting points for your variety or the numbers of them you have. It doesn't matter what they do. I dig that. I like that there's a different way to play. It's a different strategy when that witch is in play. I also like that there's a reward for not using the witches and just keeping your coins. And that reward for not using them is actually a key point here. So not only is the timing of when you might choose to use a witch important, but the fact that you're rewarded for not using them makes you question how badly you really need that advantage as well and just adds a great new uh, dynamic of thought into the game. Finally, there's the new recipes for existing ingredients and all I can say is yes, please, more, please give me more recipe cards because every recipe that's added to this game adds an exponential number of new ingredient combinations and more possibilities in the game, making it more replayable. I am pretty sure you could play Quacks every day and never play the same game twice by mixing these up. I don't know how many possible combinations there are, but I know it's more than 1028 that we got to with Istanbul in the expansion. It's more than that now because there's six different, well, for most of the ingredients, there's six different versions. A, st a st statistician's dream, I'm certain. Yeah, if anyone out there actually knows the possible, I bet you I can find it on Board Game Geek. Someone's probably done this as a threat on Board Game Geek. Now, I will admit, some of them don't. Like the black, the, the black moths, whatever it's called, death head moths. There's only four versions of the pumpkin. There's only, well, there's technically two because you could have the sixes in or out, but like the, the reds and yellows and blues and all the standard ones, six different types. Now, as for what I think of these new recipes and how they work, I, it's a mixed bag, but that's to be expected. I found the ingredients in the original quacks to be kind of a mixed bag. There were some I like playing with more than others, but that's different than what Deanna liked playing with. And that's different than what my daughter Gwen likes playing with. Everyone that plays this, I think, has their own favorite ingredients. And having more variety just gives you more to choose from. I love some of the new recipes. My favorite is actually the new purple, the new ghost breath, that gives you buying power based on what victory point spots your purples cover. So you finish the game, then you uncover all your purples and look at the victory points, and you get to spend that. I love that ability. That one I had a ton of fun with. I like being able to buy more stuff. I want more chips in my bay. It's just more fun to have more variety in there. Now, my wife, on the other hand, loved the new red toadstool that lets you draw an extra chip. But when you draw that chip, you either place it or put it off to the side. The thing is, before the end of the round, you've got to put that in, even if you've exploded. Yeah, no, that's uh, I didn't get a I didn't play enough games to get a favorite, but I did enjoy all of the new recipes yeah. that we tried. Overall, this is a fantastic expansion for the Quacks of Quedlinburg. Gives me everything I want from a board game expansion. It gives me new ways to enjoy a game I already own and I always love and provides some simple in-game fixes for some of the problems 
some players had with quacks, providing new catch-up mechanics and more ways to mitigate the randomness of this bag build. Now, usually when I get an expansion that features a number of modules you can mix and match, use or not use, there's one or two I don't like, a few I like, and at least one I love, and one I will use every game going forward. In this expansion, there's nothing here I don't like. There's nothing I wouldn't just leave in. I like all of the modules, and I now use all of them every game, and I don't expect that to change. Again, really, it's just the fifth player that may be the least useful, but I doubt excluding that would have made any significant monetary difference. Yeah, I keep forgetting, honestly, like even while talking about this, the fifth player is like a module you can add or remove. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, you also get to play five players. Like to me, that's the, it gives you all this awesome stuff. Yeah, yeah, and you can play five players. Yeah, but it, I, it, again, if you're if you're a family of five, you may have never considered buying Quacks true. until the, the ability to uh, play with five emerged. Totally fair. So while the base game of Quacks is fantastic and still a solid game on its own, it doesn't need this expansion, but I don't see why you wouldn't get it. I don't think anyone enjoys Quacks wouldn't want to own this. If you own and enjoy Quacks, just go out and pick up Herb Witches when you get a chance. I don't see any reason you shouldn't. Now, where the big question comes in is for people who don't own Quacks of Quedlinburg. Well, you can buy this expansion on its own. You can also currently get it in one or of two different bundle boxes. Now, the first is called the Quacks of Quedlinburg Big Box. That comes with the base game and this expansion only. But then there's also the Quacks of Quedlinburg Mega Box. That comes with this expansion and the Alchemist expansion. Now, personally, I do recommend at least getting the big box or find some other combo where you're going to get the base game and Herb Witches together. I really do think this expansion makes the base game better, and it's going to be worth it. If you enjoy the game at all, you're going to like this additional content. As for making sure to get Alchemist, I've heard very, very good things about this game. Everyone tells me it's a must-have. Everyone tells me it's great, but I haven't actually tried it myself to be able to tell you for sure you should rush out and get it. Of course, with the demand for this game high, Please do check prices mm -hmm. and don't get caught paying ridiculous secondary market prices. They are between printings on the base game itself right now, but more will be coming. And I will assume that the reprintings will be the mega box. I have a feeling the big box probably won't be reprinted because it's kind of like a middle range. But yes, don't bother. You never should pay for more. Like as long as the company is currently putting in, and I can guarantee you, they are printing a new edition of this game. This is not a dead game. You don't need to pay the eBay prices or, or other things. Check your local game stores too. Just because the game's out of print doesn't mean no one has it. It just means that generally the big online stores don't have copies. Now, finally, there's another group of people who might want to check this out. And that's based on my wife's opinion on Quacks. See, Deanna wasn't a big Quacks fan. She knows I like it, and she knows the kids like it, and our regular game group likes it, so she would play it, but it was never a game she'd recommend. Now, that changed once we started playing with the Herb Witches. Her main complaint about Quacks was the lack of player agency, and she found the Herb Witches, with its new ingredients, more options, and especially the Herb Witch powers, gave her a sense of control that she found missing in the base game. So if you played Quacks and thought it was okay, or maybe thought it was a little too random, or you felt you didn't have enough player agency, you might want to see if you can find a way to try it with Herb Witches. This expansion might just be what it takes for you to also dig Quacks as much as some of us do. Well, that's it for our review of the Herb Witches expansion for the Quacks of Quedlinburg. Have you tried this expansion? What did you think? If not... What are some other expansions you think are perfect additions to their base games? Tell us about it in the comments below. And I also invite you to check out my written review of this expansion over at the Tabletop Bellhop blog.